Welcome to Could It Exist in Real Life, where worldwide floods aren't caused by global warming. Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, or as I'd like to call it, the real water world game or Nintendo's apology for the virtual void. <laughs> I kid, of course, but I cannot help but find it funny that this was made by the same company I thought Kevin Costner would make the money in the mid-90s. <laughs> Hi, ah, Angry Video Game Nerd. If you weren't so funny, I wouldn't have any way to pay tribute to your comedy. Like most games, it is very unique, but it sticks to the status quo. It was the first game to have an overworld water travel that you can control, not counting the Zora flippers and Link to the Past. It also gives us hints that the Tatilier Link was probably not the only Link in the world. Best of all, it introduced us to the fan named and now officially named Toon Link, due to its change in animation and whom, unlike other Links who are usually mute, he could talk. The sad thing though is this along with its sequel games are the only ones I never played. Now that I've taken a moment to get booed, let me explain. I was a slow generation. Basically, every time I've ever had a system, it was usually a generation behind. Hell, three years ago, I was lucky enough to keep up with the Wii. But at the time this came out, I had N64. I never had a GameCube. The only thing close was during the playable display at Toys R Us. The demo wasn't really that good. While my Wii could play the GameCube games, and has ports for the controller, I never found an adaptation. So I'll just wait till Wii U puts it on the virtual console. Our story begins in a world that was flooded. Very few land masses exist save for a few islands. Among the islanders was Link, or rather a boy who was named after the Link in Ocarina of Time. He was to participate in a tradition where a boy was chosen to play a part of the hero of time when they came of age. This was the first of four games where it showed Link having to receive his clothes rather than just have them. It was Link's birthday, so naturally it was his turn to play the hero. During this, he sees a girl in danger being snatched away by a giant bird. Link, the good nature he is, he rescues her. And in both spite and mistaken identity, the bird kidnaps his sister Errol, mistaking her for the girl it took. The real girl, Tetra, is captain of a gang of pirates that are looking for the Tower of the Gods. Much to their reluctance, they are tasked with helping Link rescue Errol, while uncovering a dark plot from a very familiar foe. Thankfully, there's more I can work with in this one. So it's time for... Could it exist in real life? The first thing on the list is the Pirate's Charm, a stone that allows Tetra to track Link and talk to him from a distance. Could this exist? Yes and no. According to Crystal Cure, legend has it that there used to be crystals and stones that were able to communicate with angels and other celestial beings. Since Link is Hylian, the closest thing to a god, Tetra can contact him anywhere he goes. The reason I say yes and no is because it's still a legend, so it can and cannot be true. This I do encourage to find out, but be warned, it could end up like Raiders of the Lost Ark. The next thing is the Tingle Tuner. Among a lot of things, it could contact Tingle and map your current location. Could this exist? Triple yes. The first yes is because the Tingle Tuner is just an ordinary Game Boy Advance. You hook it up to the GameCube. The second yes is that it's essentially a GPS used to track your current location and others. The third yes is that it's now known as a tablet. That's right, folks. Tingle invented the iPad. Then we have the Deku Leaf a large leaf that is used as a fan to blow dust and debris away, as well as used as a glider. Could this exist? Another triple yes. The first yes is the obvious, because it's a fan leaf. These come in a variety of forms, such as a fold-out one. The second yes is because it also doubles as a leaf blower. And the third yes, much like the wingsuit on the rocks cape, the Deku leaf was taken from another gliding concept, paragliding. Paragliding is a hybrid between hang gliding and parachuting, in which the paraglider uses thermals to keep them in the air. However, much like the wingsuit, I advise you not to participate unless you're either a licensed skydiver or in supervision of a licensed skydiver. Yes, it's cool, but it can be very dangerous. Next, we have the Hero's Charm, a mask that can see how much life Link's enemies have. This was the first and only time you could ever do this in a Zelda game. Could this exist? Yes and no. There is no such mask that can do such a thing, however it represents a good luck charm, hence the name. It's not uncommon for heroes to place their faith in something that they think would bring them luck. Last but not least, there's the Wind Waker, a conductor's baton that is used to control the winds as well as function as the game's musical instrument. Could this exist? Yes and no. Much like the wooden sword, it's essentially a magic wand, only in the shape of a conductor's tool. The real trick is what Link is conducting. Judging by the sounds that come from it when he uses the item, it sounds like he's conducting a choir. So in actuality, the waker is useless. It's the choir that has the real magic. As usual, debate, argue, and let me know what I missed. Stay tuned for more.